for your mighty works in our lives. We are grateful because you have been good to us. You have been great to us, oh Lord. You have shown us great and mighty blessings all through 2023. You are the one that showed us the path to take in 2023. I don't know if any one of you actually, you know, you knew what to do at the beginning of 2023. You actually knew what we go, what you will go through, what you will pass through in 2023. I don't know if any one of you can boldly say, yes, I knew. I knew what I will go through, what I will pass through in 2023. I don't know if any one of you can boldly say that. But you see, God helped you all through 2023. God helped you. God helped you every day. Even when you are about to take the wrong bend, God still helped you. And so we want to give God praise and thanks. With this assurance that the God who helped us in 2023, showing us the path to take. Many of us have taken paths that could have led to danger, to destruction. But the Lord divided us, diverted our thoughts, diverted our minds, and we took the right path. Sometimes we did not even know when we suddenly moved towards the right path. I just want us to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because every year has his own path. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to conquer 2023 for allowing us to stay in your path all through 2023. And so we look forward to your spirit guiding us and leading us all through 2024. To you be all the glory, Father. Lord, speak to us today. None of me, but all of you, Jesus. Let your word come out expressly, O oh Lord, blessing your people and showing us the right path to take for 2024. We praise your name, Lord, in Jesus mighty name. We are praying. Amen. And amen. And amen in Jesus name. I want to congratulate you and also congratulate myself, giving all the glory to God for giving us the privilege to see this day. And in a few hours, we are going to be moving into 2024. And uh, like Dickness Agnes said, and most of us on this platform, and I believe all of us, you know, we are excited for the year 2024 because we have something to look forward to. We look forward to God's guidance, God's direction. You know, those who don't have anyone to lean on, those who don't know what tomorrow holds for them, they can't look forward to the next year because they'll be thinking of, of I mean, how are they going to make it? How are they going to do it? But we can confidently, excitedly say that we are looking forward to 2024 because we have the sat nav the best satellite navigation, you know, the navigator of the heaven and earth, and that is the Holy Spirit guiding us and leading us into the path to take. So we are not afraid of tomorrow, you know, because Jesus lives. We don't care about what happens tomorrow because we know he owes tomorrow in his hands and he owes our future in his hands. And so we are confidently waiting for 2024 to arrive because it will show us the path to take. There is a path to take. For 2024. And that is what the Lord shall be speaking to us um, today. You know, can I submit to you that there is a path in human heart? The path to take in 2024 is in your heart. There is a path in human heart. It is our heart that guides everything that we do. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it come issues of life. Out of it comes the path of life. Out of your heart comes everything that will determine the course of your life. It's all in your heart. And it all depends on what you store in your heart. If you are storing God there, if, if you are storing good things, it, according to um, um, Philippians chapter 4, I think verse 8, he says, whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, whatever is honorable, he said, think about these things. If you want to know the right path to take, or you want to take the right path, it starts from your heart. The path of your heart is what will determine what is going to happen in 2024. They always say that if you believe you can, you are right. If you believe you cannot, you are right. So either you can or you cannot is the same thing because all is in your heart. For instance, I can believe that I can climb this mountain and you will see that I will climb it. So when we get to that mountain and they believe that they cannot and they will not be able to because the path we take is in our hearts. And that is why you have to see for the state of your heart. 
as you are going into 2024, you have to, you know, it pains me so much when I see so much limitation that people place on their heart and limitations will block back. You, for anyone that places limitation on their heart, even when they see the right path, they will not be able to take it because they are already limited in their heart, in their mind. Joyce Meyer wrote a book, The Battlefield of the Mind. Whatever you believe in your heart that you can do, that you can achieve, that is what will happen to you in 2024. And so this message is for you to prepare your heart that 2024 is going to be a year of greatness, a year of spiritual growth, a year that we soar high like an eagle, that you will fly high. That is the year 2024. So there is a path for you to take. And that is the path of Christ. The path of Christ. The path of I'm living for this cause. Jesus said, for this cause I came. For this reason I came. For this purpose I came. And I must accomplish it. Not the path that somebody will drag you here. Somebody will twist you here. Somebody will divert your attention. Somebody will. Some people will say, when you say, why are you not doing this? They will say, eh, because someone offended me. Because someone, you know, someone disturbed me. Because someone distracted me. If you are sure of your path, I don't think anyone will be powerful enough to distract you. Jesus said concerning Mary, he said, Mary has chosen that one thing that is needful and it shall not be taken away from her. You must choose the path of Christ for 2024. And you see, every other thing will fall into place. So there is a path in human art. As a matter of fact, when you look at human art, there is... You know, even our physical art, our physical art, if you Google it right now, you will see several roots that lead into and out of our heart. Roots that lead into our heart and certain roots, I don't know what they call it, maybe vibes or whatever. Maybe Bola Miguel will help me with that, you know. But things that, the, the root, the, the, um, the canal that lead into your heart and there are roots that lead outside of our heart. The one that lead into your heart, they bring blood into your heart. Mommy, the one, yes. Mommy, valves. Valves, thank They're you. Valves. Yeah, valves, thank you. So the ones, that, the valves that lead out of your heart, those ones carry blood outside. You know, one carries oxygen in, the other carries um, that carbon dioxide outside. You see, and they distribute to every part of your body. Once the heart, once those valves are blocked, the, what do they say people we have? They say they have heart attack. That is, and once there is heart attack, the whole system shuts down. The whole system of a human body shuts down once there is heart attack. And what causes heart attack? Blockage in one of the verbs. Blockage. So that is the reason why the Bible says to us, guard your heart. It's not talking about physical heart alone. There's a lot of stories on the internet, YouTube, medical, from medical point of view, that these are the food, you, these are the types of food you eat to keep your heart healthy. These are the exercises you do to keep your heart healthy because your heart is very, very important. Once it stops working, it will take miracle to bring it back again. So the same way our spiritual heart, the path to life is inside this, inside this, your spiritual heart. If you believe in your heart, that you can do it, you can do it. That is why there are also two paths that lead into your spiritual art. The art through which you receive information and the art through which you pass out information, you act. When information comes into your heart and you see through it, you agree with certain things there as you see through it, there is another route that the result of that information will pass out from your art. That is, that, that is what will reflect in your action in your action and reaction to things. So if you have allowed the right thing to enter into the verb, the spiritual verb that goes into your spiritual act, if you allow the right thing, oxygen, proper things to enter into your heart, you will see that what you will give out, what the result what of what will come out of your heart will be positive, will be glorious, will be faith-filled. It depends on what you allow to enter your heart. There is a path that you must take for 2024. And I say to you, it begins right in your heart. In your heart right now. That is the reason why the Bible says, the, the Bible says, I believe, so I confess. I believe in my heart, so I speak. Apostle Paul said, we are like those who believe and so they speak. 
If I don't, if it's what I believe, that will be, if it is garbage in, that will be garbage out. If I, if I allow negative information to enter into my heart, then I will give out negative action and reactions. And those negative actions and reactions will determine the course of one's life. If you give out positive reactions, it will determine the course of your life. If you give out negative reactions, it will determine the course of your life. And that is why you have to be very careful. As you are moving to 2024, all those baggages that you luggage you place on your heart, contrary things that you put in your heart, they affect your thinking, they affect your life. You have to say 2023, enough is enough. As I am on the threshold of entering 2024, I leave these baggages behind. It's a new life. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new year for 2024. I am not going to allow myself to be written with negative thoughts, with negative, oh, this one offend me. I put them on my heart. I was sharing with someone yesterday, you know, after our prayer meeting, I was, I was counseling a lady in the night. And I said to her, I said, you are facing all this problem because of your heart. Because of your heart. That is why you are unhappy. That is why you are sad. That is why you are depressed. Because the same thing that happened to you has happened to so many people. Why are you stuck in one place? Because of the state of your heart. You have chosen a path. I said you have allowed yourself to choose a path in your life. And that path in your life is affecting every area of your life. Until you change that perspective. Until you change your mind. Until you remove all those baggages, luggages from your heart. You will still be, your eyes will be clouded. You will not be able to see clearly. You know, and that is to someone today. God has made a path for everything on this earth. Hey, God has made a path. Everyone has a path they must follow on earth. But not everyone follows the path. That is the bad news there. The good news is that God has given everyone a path to follow. So you cannot say, God, God has not given me, I don't even know which path. That is, you don't know. That is another thing. Ignorance is another thing, but the reality of the path is, an, is one thing. Ignorance is another thing. So God has given you a path to take. And that path includes chapter 20, 24. In that path, there is something written concerning you. You know, the question I always ask the Lord straight from October. Not, I don't wait till December before I ask the Lord what is because October is my birthday. All right, October 5th. So I start to ponder. On my assignment for the next year, I start to ask the Lord, so what does the next chapter of my life hold? What does it hold? Because I know there is a path I must take in life. And my heart is already made up concerning the path that I must take. No, no body, no power of hell, no body, no human being can, di can distract me or divert my attention. No matter who that person is, my mind is made up. My heart has agreed with the path that God wants me to take. And that is the path that leads to eternal life, that leads me to the Lamb of God, and it cannot be changed. So you must understand that you have a path. Some of us, our path is, my own path is on equipping believers, equipping the body of Christ. Another person's path might be medical. Another person's path might be caring. Another person's path might be hospitality. Another person's path might be teaching. You know, whatever. God has given us, each and every one of us, a path to take. He has made a path for everything on this planet. All right? For everything under the sun, there is a path. There is an everlasting path that we must take. You see, planes move in the sky. You wonder every day. Okay, let's talk about our, our Heathrow here. In London alone, we have almost like four to five airports around London. Talk about Heathrow alone. Every one, one minute or two, two minutes, Planes are flying. They are taking off. They are landing. They are taking off. And you wonder in the sky, how do they know where they are going? They are going there because there is a pilot that knows the path. There is a pilot that understands the navigation in the air, the altitude, the latitude. They understand all these things. So you sit on the plane. You are less concerned whether you are flying over, you know, da, 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 da. where are you now? Whether the, the plane is sitting where? You don't know. You don't know what is happening. But there is a pilot and you are comfortable sitting there because there is someone who knows the way, a pilot who knows the path that the 
plane must take on the sky. And then they take off, they land, and you are comfortable. You get out of the plane, you are now in another country or in another place. The same thing with the sheep. Don't you wonder, how does the sheep know its way? In the vastness of the ocean, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, that could swallow the whole of Africa and it would be as if it had just, it had just finished eating, you know? Very massive, bigger than the whole of Africa. Pacific Ocean, bigger than the whole of Asia and Africa combined together. Yet, the ship will find its way, navigate, because there is a compass. There is a path that has been charted through the compass. They call something the North Star. They look at the North Star. He directs them because the sailors understand the path of the ship. If they put you there, you will not know what to do because you are not trained to know that. So if they put you there, you'll be wondering what is happening here. But when they sail or is there, even if they can foresee turbulence, if they can foresee storm, they will still go through because they know the path very well. All right? Everyone, even birds in the air, they have the path they take. Vehicles, when we drive, we know the path we take. There was a day I just finished from office and I was so tired. As a matter of fact, I was almost fainting that day. I could not see properly. But I had to take my children. Even my husband was there. I had to take everyone from the office home. Do you know how I got home from the office? I cannot say because my eyes were like, they were, they, they were shrouded in darkness. I couldn't see. But when I got home, and for a whole week, I could not even get out of bed. Because my eyes were like, I could not see anything. But how I got from my office home, up to today, I can't explain. And the reason is because that is the path I take every day. It's the path I take every day. So which means in my brain, in my heart, I knew the route like the back of my hands. So that was what helped me as I was going. By the grace of God, I got home. So there is a path for everyone. If vehicles knew their path, trains know their path, all right? That is why trains must not derail. If you go to London Bridge, you see every part is leading blue, blue. Everything is like scattered. You are wondering, how do these train drivers know which path to take? Why are they not colliding? We have not had stories of two trains colliding. I don't know, although it does happen, but it's not frequent. Or two planes colliding in the sky. In the sky. Or two ships colliding on the ocean. Because everyone understands their path. Do you understand your own path? Do you understand the path that God wants you to take? Are you on that path or you are on someone else's path? Many of us, we keep looking at what other people are doing. Oh, this one is making it. They are being successful. Oh, that one is making it. Oh, that one is doing something. Oh, that one is getting the best mark in class. That one is the best student. This one is, we, are, we keep looking at what others are doing. We don't face our own lane. We don't face our path. The path that God has or as limited, he has created and established in your heart long before you were born. You don't sit down to ask God, what is this path? Am I on this path? Because once you find your path, nobody can take you away from it. You have to take your eyes off what others are doing or else you will be unhappy. You will be sad. You will not enjoy life. If you keep looking at, oh, my mates and my friend, or my sibling, or my, my neighbor, you know, my, my house is not as big as my neighbors. Oh, my car is this. Oh, my career is this. Oh, my if not, oh, my wife is not this. My wife is not like other people's wife. My husband is not like other people's husband. Oh, my child. Why is my child behaving like this? It's not like that other person's child. If you keep comparing and comparing and comparing, not facing your own name, not facing your own path, and be grateful. For the path that God has chosen for you, you cannot be happy. So in 2024, I beg you in the name of the Lord, face your path. And that path is in your heart. So you will not be wondering, how do I discover this path? It's in my heart. I can't see it. I don't know it. All right? Where is it? God has set that path. He has set his own path in human heart. All right? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. He says, God created man perfect. He said, but man sought many inventions. That is what Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29 says. He said, God created us perfect. He created us good. He created us contented. He said, but when man grew up, 
Man began to seek for many inventions. How do I take two and two and make it four? How do I combine three and five and make it seven? And man began to seek many inventions. And in seeking many inventions that are outside of God, the man became discontented, dissatisfied, looking for things that will satisfy him because there is no way anything can satisfy you if it's not of God. I, I make both to say that. I make both to say it. There is no way anything can satisfy you. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the properties in the world. You can have all the accolades, all the awards. In fact, they can celebrate you in Grammy and then take you to Oscar, from Oscar to, to British Awards, everywhere. You win every award without God in your heart, without following the path of God. You will still be satisfied. That is why you will see people who win awards, people who are rich, people who are billionaires, you will see that they commit suicide. They still commit suicide. And you'll be wondering, what else are they looking for? Because they have missed that part. I remember reading the book, the book In Pursuit of Purpose. I don't know if some of you have read it by my school, In Pursuit of Purpose. It spoke about a man, a young man and an older man at the beach. They were both at the beach. The older man, around 70, 70 something years old, went into the ocean. I was going further and further into the ocean. The young man was watching him. The young man was watching him and said, ah, what is wrong with this man? Why is he going further into the ocean? Even if you can swim, there's a limit to what you can swim in the ocean. So the young, and all of a sudden, he saw that he could not see the head of that old man again. He could, and so the young man got up from the beach and ran inside the water, inside the ocean. And he, he began to look at the spot where the old man was. And he thanked God that the young man could swim. So he swam there, picked the old man and dragged him. So the shore, the man was already almost dead. He had been swallowing water. He wanted to kill himself. So the young man brought him to the seashore and began to pump, you know, he applied first aid, pump his tummy. The old man was saying, why did you rescue me? Why did you save me? He said he wanted to die. And when the young man looked at him closely, he saw that that was the richest man in their area, in their city the richest man, that all the young men, all the young men are always looking up to, ah, if I can just be like this man. Oh, this man is so accomplished. He's so accomplished. My Smuro wrote it in his book. He said, this, this young man was now looking at this man and said, ah, ah, sir, why would you want to kill yourself, sir? Why would you want, the, young, the old man said, ah, why did you rescue me? He did, and he was, the man was perplexed. That why would a rich, accomplished man kill himself? And the old man said, Everybody, in the eyes of everybody, he said he looked accomplished. He looked like he was, he was the richest. His family was doing well. Everything was the business. And he was a philanthropist, always throwing money around everybody. And he did not get his money from the wrong thing. Don't, he did not get his money from drugs or from anything. He got his money by hard, hard work. So he was rich. And he was saying that all his life, is always what has always been his driving force is looking at other people that he must be better than other people. He must be richer. He must be the richest. He, so he has been driven by that passion to be rich, to be rich, to be rich. He said, but, and everything has been because of his family, because of everybody around. He said, but right now, he got to a point that he knew that the path that God wanted him to take in life, he never took it. He said, so he is so dissatisfied with life at that age, so discontented that he now looked at himself as too old to start again, to go back to the original path that God wanted him to take. He said he now saw himself as too old. For instance, now, if he neglected everything and he started to do what God wanted him to do, maybe God wanted him to have a, maybe God wanted him to, 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 to be a pastor, or maybe God wanted him to, to be a nurse, or God wanted him to be a primary school teacher, but, no, but he had been pursuing money, and he actually got money, all right? So he, I don't know what he wanted to become, but he said he felt that he was too old to go back to the original path. He said, so that was the reason why he, he thought he, he rounded everything up, summed everything up, and it was equal to suicide, that he should just kill himself. So there is a path for you. There is a path for you. The path of A is different from the path of B. When planes go on the sky, everybody, they climb, all right, they are saying but everybody will go their different paths, their different routes. They will go to different nations. If they will say, ah, I love New York. Let me just divert everybody to New York. No, you must face your own path. So God has set that path. It's called eternity. 
the path that leads to eternity. That is the path I'm talking about. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, Ecclesiastes 3, 11, he says, he has set the path to eternity in man's heart. Where is it? In your heart. As he come back to it, your heart. He has set it in your heart. That's the reason why that you will never be satisfied with anything until you do the will of God. Until you find your path in life, you will never be satisfied. There was a day that I was backing up in FOL, Festival of Life, you know, um, in, in Excel. Some of you know Excel, London. So then I was, I was a member of the choir, the, the Festival of Life Choir. Um, Festival of Life, is it's an occasion that they invite all the singers, gospel singers all over the world to come and sing. It was a, it was an occasion. To, it was always a night vigil from 10 p.m. to 5, I mean, from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. the following day. So all night, all night, all evening stroke, all night program by Pastor Adiboye of Redeemed Christian Church of God. So then I was part of the choir and we were backing up for Sinatch. Sinatch, they call Sinatch to come and leave. That was, I think, 2012 or 2013 or 2014, I can't remember. And we were backing up for Sinatch. And so I was looking at Sinatch that day. You know, everybody that knows me knows I love song. I'm a composer. I love worship. I, you know, I love anything that has to do with worship. So, and I've always wanted to be a worship leader. I'm not, I, I've been a worship leader for many years. I've led national choir in Nigeria, worship leading. So now I wasn't talking, I wanted to be a worldwide worship leader. To be releasing albums, singing all over the world. That was my title. I was thinking of that. So that day when I was backing off for Sinatra, when we were backing off for Sinatra, you know, at that airport, I was thinking, I said, oh God, when it was time for us to pray, to pray, and daddy, anyway, was saying, ask God for what you want. I was weeping that day. I was passionately asking God, God, if you can just bless me, if you can just make me, you not know, to be like this Sinatra, to sing, to, not just to sing, to have the grace of God upon Sinatra, I was praying. But it was a wrong prayer. Read my lips. Wrong prayer. Wrong prayer because God has not created photocopies. God has not created what? Photocopies. There are no photocopies anywhere. God has created originals. I am an original masterpiece of the creator. Sinatch is an original masterpiece of the creator, all right? That Jadebo is an original masterpiece. You are an original masterpiece of the creator. So I was, I was passionately weeping and crying because I know when I want something from the Lord, I know how I want, I and like to move his hand to do it for me. So I know how to do some kind of prayer that, you know, God will just look at me and say, first take. All right, that day I was praying. I was praying, but God did not answer me because it was a wrong prayer. Three years later, God showed me the path that he has created for me to take. Right now, can I ever wish to be like Sinat? Never. Never again. Can I wish to be like, uh, I don't know, any other musician? Because I love Sinat. So maybe Dali Zek. Dali Zek, it was my first love in gospel music before every other musician. So can I say, I, all, Matty Samson, all those ones are my first love in gospel, gospel music. So can I say that I, I want to be like them? No. Right now, I am who God has made me to be because I found my path. So there is a path for 2024. The path you have been taking, if you have not been satisfied, please make a U-turn. Ask the Lord. That's what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. He said, stand by the road and look. And look and ask for the ancient path where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your soul. Several action was there. It says stand. So the first thing is that you have to stand still and say, all this look here, look here, look here, look here, and there, all this catchy catchy. I have to tell my eyes to be patient, to be still. He says, stand by the road. Where the crossway, you know, there is crossroad, different roads. And you are thinking, which road should I take in 2024? Should I go this way? Should I go that way? And should I further my education? Or should I start a new business? Or should I start this? Should I get married? Should I have another baby? Should I? All this is, there are several roads. He said, but you need to stand by this crossroad and look very well. How do you look? You look through the eyes of God. You look through the word of God. You ask the Holy Spirit for the path to take. He said, stand by the road and look. So you first of all stand. Secondly, you look very well. 
You are not looking here and you are not looking at other person, other people. You are looking at the roads. He said, and ask, stand by the road and look and ask for the ancient part. What is the ancient part? The part that God orchestrated, God specially designed for you before he formed you in your mother's womb, before he made you, before he created you. There was a part that God wanted you to take. And God said that is the ancient part. The part that preceded even your mother, before they even gave back to your mother, before your mother gave back to you, that part preceded you, preceded your mother, preceded your ancestors. The ancient part. He said, ask for that ancient part. Let me tell you, I asked for that ancient part in the year 2016. I fasted and I prayed and I asked. And the Lord showed me clearly the ancient part he wanted me to take. So there is a path. Don't let 2024 be a waste. We have very few hours, like I said, to enter into 2024. Don't let it be a waste. Don't let it be like 2023. Let it be different. Let 2024 be different. Stand by the road and look and ask for the ancient path where the good way is. And next one says, and walk therein. And walk therein. So you first of all stand, you look, you ask, when you ask and they've shown you, you walk in it. Don't look at it and say, this does not look like what I want. That is the problem with many people. God, we said it is the path I want you to take. But you keep looking at other people's path. You keep looking at someone else's path. You keep looking at how someone is making it and you are not making it. All right? And you are dissatisfied with your life. So God says, there is an ancient path for you. Stand and look. When you see it, he say, walk in it. And lastly, when you walk in it, you will do what? You will find rest for your soul. Go and meditate on that Jeremiah 6, 16. I was young when my father gave me that scripture. I was very, very young. When my father gave me that, he said the way of rest. That was what the Lord, did. my father said, he said the way of rest. And he gave us that scripture, Jeremiah 6, 16. And that has been my, I've always asked Lord, where is the ancient path that you want me to walk in? Where is that ancient path? 2024 is part of that ancient path. It's, but if you have not yet started walking in the path that God wants you to walk, now is the time for you to stand still, to stand and look and ask and walk. And then you will find rest for your soul. All right? Because there is a path that God wants you to take. That path, what is that path? It's a path through which you can navigate to meet your God. It's the path, that is number one, the path through which you can navigate. You know, easily you will meet God because if you're on the path that God wants you to walk, you will not struggle to find joy. You will not struggle to find the presence of God because you are on the path. He said, it is the road that will lead you to the Lamb of God. The road that will give you a closer walk with God because you are on the path that God wants you to take. You will, not, you, you will always have the presence of God. It is the road through which you will find purpose in life. It is the road that will lead you to peace and abundant life. Many people, in fact, 90, more than 90% of the world population do not find peace and rest in their life. Ask them, many people will tell you they are not enjoying their life because they see something they're looking for. They see something that is outside their grip. They are looking for it. They think that the more they walk, the more they will find that thing. The more they go to work, the more they will find that thing. Some people think the more they, they destroy others, the more they will find that thing. Some people will think the more they read, the more they read, they will find that thing. Some people will think the more they, I don't know, the more they research, research, and go to every training under the sun. As they run from investment training, they run to property training, they run to stock exchange training, they run to Bitcoin training, they, they are, they're running alta scatter. They think that is how they will find it. No, no. That part is with your manufacturer. The part we are talking about is with your manufacturer. It's like uh, your manufacturer has given you a manual and you are asking someone who did not manufacture you, who is also a product themselves. You are asking them to show you the right way. Why don't you go back to God? You know, it's a, it's a shame. It will be a big disgrace if someone should live their own life following the wrong thing, never sitting down and be satisfied with life. It's a shame. It's a big shame. So this year, as we are moving to 2024, you know, as we are moving to 2024, 
I want you to, by the grace of God, God is asking you, stand by the road. This is the crossroad now. You know, 2023 is here, and we are moving to, we are crossing over to 2024. As you are crossing over, there are different paths in 2024. There are different, different paths. Let me tell you, I have asked the Lord. Apart from the major vision God has given me, I have asked the Lord for specific path that he wants me to take 2024. And he has shown me. That is why I'm saying to you, you can ask him. You can stand and say, Lord, there are so many things that are open in 2024. Show me which one, which one you want for me. What do you want for me? How do I, how do I show me the one that, the actual path you want me to take? Because the path of God shall be laden with everything that will bring satisfaction and contentment to your soul. But the most important thing is, as the Lord shows you, please walk in it. Walk in it. I want you to type on the chat right now and say, I will walk in it. I will walk. I will not question God. I will walk in it. I will walk in the path that God wants me to take in the name of Jesus. It is a path of less struggle and great returns. A path of less struggle and great returns. A path of joy and tranquility. A path of harmony between your spirit and that of God. A path of harmony. You know, when your spirit achieves harmony with God, nothing on earth will shake you. You become unshakable. You become unshakable. When your heart and that of God is in harmony, when you are in harmony with God, no matter, no matter what anybody is doing around you, it's none of your business. You have a straight line which you are facing. You know, it's a path that goes on from here unto eternity. God has put a candle light in your heart. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, it says, God has put a candle light in your heart. But don't kill that candle light. What is that candle light? The spirit of God, your conscience and the spirit of God. Don't kill it. He said the candle light, Proverbs 20, 27, is, there is a lamp of God that searches and examines your heart. Don't kill it. Ask it to lead you in 2024. That is your path. He will show you exactly what, what he wants you to do. All right? So he has breathed that life into you. All right? So follow. Some people will say follow your heart. Let me tell you the difference. Because I see that many, many motivational talk, we say, follow your heart, follow your heart, follow your heart. Hey, if your heart is not regenerated, don't follow it. It will lead you to destruction. Follow your heart. It's not always true. Because there are some hearts that are not regenerated. There are some wicked hearts. There are some evil hearts. There are some ignorant hearts. If you follow your heart, it depends on what you have stored in your heart. If you follow your heart and you have not stored anything there, you can imagine where it will lead you to. All right? You can imagine. So man, everybody in their own regenerated state, when they are not yet born again, they, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 17, 9, he said the heart of man is desperately wicked, desperately sick. He said the heart of man is sick. Who can understand it? But the heart of a regenerated man is not sick. It's healthy by the precious blood of Jesus. So you will now see because you have yielded your heart to Jesus, your heart is no longer sick. You have been made whole. Amen? So no matter how much you direct your path, how much you plan your life, when you are not with Jesus, when you are not planning according to God's will, when you are not planning according to the manual for your life, it will always lead to destruction. You might get all the accolades. People might clap for you. People can clap and clap and award you, but you might be on the wrong path. For the fact that people are hailing you, everybody is following you on Instagram, following you on social media, following you everywhere. Don't tell me that you are making it in the sight of God. So that path can lead to destruction. That is why you see so many daily celebrities are destroyed. So many people who gather points, they gather followership, they are destroyed. But you, in the corner of your room, eh, you are getting peace and contentment because you have discovered the path, the path of God. So I just want you to say, I want you to understand that a ship must not set sail without a sailor in it. Have you seen that ship before? How many of you have been on cruise? I've not been on one, maybe because I don't like water that much. I like water to play with, but inside, inside ocean, I'm always looking. 
do I want to go on a cruise? A ship will never set sail without a sailor. No plane will fly in the sky without a pilot. Huh. Though I like, I'm, I'm looking forward to when they will drive less cars. Some people are saying they can never enter a driverless car. Maybe I will enter a driverless car because I love technology. Anyway, so, but you haven't seen, even though they said there is now, but I don't think any one of us on this platform has seen a driverless car. Train, even when you see a driverless train, like tram, like DLR, when you know those DLR, when you see a driverless train, there is still someone controlling it. There's a control room somewhere controlling it. So nothing sets in motion without someone controlling it without a sailor, without a manager, without a coordinator, without a pilot, the same way. Don't set sail on 2024 without Jesus being your pilot. Don't set sail. Make sure that as that is why we have used the, the last three days to pray and ask Jesus to pilot us. We have asked Jesus to direct us, to go before us and clear the way. But Jesus has already cleared the way. Or follow the path that is leading you to take. Ask him, Jesus, Savior. They say him. You can search for him later. He says, Jesus, Savior, pilot me. Over the world tempestuous sea, unknown waves, and may billow, may roll. So many things may roll. He said, but charts and compass come from you. Jesus, Savior, pilot me. Charts and compass come from you. Don't forget that. Chart and compass come from Jesus. So is the one that can chart your life. In this year that we are going into, we are walking with Jesus. We are experiencing a, you know, the unprecedented growth in our walk, in our discipleship, in our walk with Jesus, because it must be different. If you want 2024 to be different, then it means you are walking according to the chart and the compass of your sailor. And he will chart your life. He will chart your course. He will pilot you. He will direct you throughout the year 2024 in the name of Jesus. How can you access this way and walk in it? The first thing is, are you born again? Are you born again? When I mean born again, I don't mean, uh, do you go to church? I don't mean that. Have you given your heart to Jesus? You know, for the fact that you pray, for the fact that you, you sing or you do so many things in church does not mean that you are born again. Who is the Lord over your life? That is what I'm asking. Because the Lord over your life is the one that will tell you where to go. Some people is the devil that will be telling them where, where to go, even though they are in the church. Even though they are in the church, but it is the devil that tells them where to go because they don't obey God. They don't obey God. Things of God don't matter to them. They don't take the things of God with seriousness. So they, and no matter how much you want it, somebody somewhere will be guiding you. So some people, what is guiding you? If you are born again, then Jesus must be the one guiding you. If you are born again. But if you are not born again, Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. There are two gods that guide people's lives. Is that God or mammon? I did not say it, Jesus said it. Mammon or God? So which one is guiding your life? Which one would you submit yourself to? Would you submit yourself to mammon? That is mammon means money. Anything that has money in it, that is what you want to do. Whatever does not have money in it, it does not concern you. So it's either God or mammon. You cannot combine both together. You cannot tell God or tell people that, look, uh, uh, you know, God knows, God sees my heart. I'm serving God and I'm still serving mammon. Jesus said you cannot serve both. You will eat one, and, and, and love the other. You will despise one and love the other. So you must, if you love money, it means you despise God. You despise God in the sense that whatever concerns God, you take it with just, with all seriousness. It, it does not mean anything to you. It does not mean much to you. Then if you serve money, if, if you serve God, it means mammon will mean nothing to you. It does not mean that you will not make money. It does not mean that you should not work for money. But mammon will mean, will mean nothing to you. You will not choose money over God. You will not choose money over God. But if you choose money over God, then it means money is the Lord over your life. So for God to direct your path, it must be the Lord over your life. For him to direct your path and bring satisfaction and rest, he must be the Lord over your life. So how can you access this way? You have to first of all ask yourself, who is the Lord over my life? Number two, you ask for it in prayer. 
I have told you, stand, ask, look, walk. That is prayer. You ask for it in prayer. Ask the Lord. And number three, you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. If you ask for it in prayer, but your heart is not yet ready for God to lead you, how is it going to work? You have to be ready. You have to be ready. Number four, you carefully study and meditate on the word of God. As you are going to 2024, the part of life is in the Bible, is in the word of God. He said by this, David said, by this is your servant. That is in Psalm 19. I think verse six or seven or eight. He said, by this is your servant warned. By the word of God, your servant is warned. Your servant is instructed. Your servant is guided. So the word of God, it's important. By complete obedience to the word of God. That's how to find your path in life. And lastly, by being quiet sometimes, you know, I was sharing it in our Bible, our Sunday school this morning. I said, you know, we need to take time off our busy schedule to study nature. Take time off to be with the Lord, to be alone with the Lord. You know, two, three days. Sometimes somebody will say, what are you doing? Go on a retreat. Go on a retreat. Go somewhere. Sit with the Lord. Go to nature. Go and observe nature. Let the word of God, you know, translate. let it enter your life meditate, find time to meditate. It's not all the time that it should be noise, noise, noise all around you. Find time to quiet down. Early in the morning, seek the Lord. If you like to be late at night, seek the Lord. Be quiet in your spirit and hear God speak to you quietly to direct your life in 2024. Amen, somebody. So let God lead you in the path that he has designed for you. Let God lead you in the path. Let God open your ears. Let your ears be open to hear the word of God so that you can receive instructions. Job said in Job 33 verse 16, Job 33 verse 16, he says, God opens the ears of men and seals them with his instruction. Let God open your ears and give you instructions for 2024. You cannot expect breakthrough if you are walking in the, right, in the wrong direction. You can't be praying and praying if you like. Do 40 days. You cannot be praying and praying to God for breakthrough while you are walking in the opposite direction. How is the love of God in your heart? You are praying to God to help you, but how is this love in your heart? How deep is the love of God in your heart? How deep? How deep? The Bible says in Job chapter 33, the same Job 33, verse 14 to 15. It gives us another way to find the path of God. He said, God does speak. For God does speak. Now one way, now another. Though no one perceives it. He now says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds. Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 15. How to find your path as you pray. God can speak to you in any way. He can speak to you in a dream. There are so many instructions I've received in a dream. There are so many instructions I've received in a vision. There are so many instructions I've received. Why study the word of God? Why pray? Job says, for God does speak. So that is an established fact that God actually speaks to people. One way or another. He said, though, sometimes people don't perceive it. He now says, in a dream, yes. In a vision of the night, yes. When you are deeply asleep, he comes to you and he whispers to your heart. He whispers to your ears. Because what concerns him concerns you. You love him and you have committed yourself to him. Then he will speak to you. So I pray for you today that your heart will be tuned to God, to the frequency of God in 2024. Your heart will be tuned. I said to you, the part of your life is in your heart. Is in your heart. It's not in my heart. It's not. God can be gracious to you as to show me certain things about you, but your part is not in my heart because I have my own part in my, in my heart. So let your heart be tuned to the frequency of God this 2024 as we are going into it so that you can hear God for yourself. Your ears can be opened. Your eyes can be opened. You can smell him. You can smell what God is saying to you. All right? And you will agree with it. Your heart will agree with it. Guard your heart in this year, 2024. For out of it is the path 
of your life. Do we want to pray right now? I don't know if you have been asking God for a particular path that he wants you to take in 2024. Maybe you are here to hear him. Let me give you the good news. Between now and the end of this day, there's still plenty that God might show you as you mellow down, as you sit before him and say, Lord, I am tired of doing my own way. I'm tired of doing it my own way. You know, I'm tired of whatever happened in 2023 or all the years in the past. Many times I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I knew what to do. But right now, I just know that I didn't know what to do. Now I want you to lead me. I don't want to lead myself. I don't want social media to lead me. I don't want the news to lead me. I don't want the economy situation of the country to lead me. I don't want my friends to lead me. I want you to lead me in 2024. And as you pray that prayer, I want you to first of all surrender the reins of your heart to Jesus. Surrender the reins of your heart to Jesus. Ask him that the verbs that lead into your heart and out of your heart, that Jesus will take control. That the Holy Spirit will take control. He will feed you with the right information. The right information will enter your heart to give you life. And the right action will come out of you to bring life to people around you. I want you to pray. Lord, I surrender my heart to you. As I move into 2024, I surrender my heart to you. Lead me, oh Lord. I surrender the rulership of my heart to you, Lord. I no longer want to live my life by calculations. I no longer want to live my life by what is going on around me. Lord, I fix my gaze on you. Holy Spirit, help me to walk with you, Jesus, to have the mind of Christ in 2024, that my mind shall be aligned with the mind of Christ, that I will walk through his path. I will see him clearly. I will follow him purposefully in 2024 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I believe and I know that all those who ask you for direction, all those who ask you for the path that they should take in 2024, that you do answer. You have answered some people and those that are yet to receive their answers, Lord, I am sure that you will reveal yourself to them, oh God, as they seek you in truth and in spirit. Father, be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for testimonies that we will share together, oh God, for the path that you have asked us to take. Thank you, Lord. If there is anyone of us, oh Lord, anyone under the sound of my voice that is on the wrong path, Lord, I pray that the power of your spirit and your mercy will bring them back onto the ancient path in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We look forward to all that you have for us in 2024. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. As we come back to share our testimonies of triumph at the end of December 2024, we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen and amen and amen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just want to say to us, congratulations.